Nee, prøv at have lyshjørne. Nej. My name is Gary Jordan. I live in Aurora, North Carolina. Lived here all my life except my college years and uh, the years that I was in service, which was 67 and 68. Or say I'm old enough that uh, this was a draft. I got drafted, uh, not a volunteer. So, uh, got drafted probably in January and I spent uh, six weeks, eight weeks at Fort Bragg. Uh, in eight weeks, I was what you would call chubby. I lost 30 pounds in eight weeks. So from there, the, the Army sent me to Fort Gordon, Georgia for I don't remember how many weeks. Uh, it was all right. It was close to Augusta, Georgia, and the, uh, the golf club and all down there. And then I left there and went to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Stayed probably a few months. And then from Fort Dix, they sent me to Fort Meade, Maryland. Uh, for I thought my hoping I was hoping at that time the rest of my time in the army, but I was there and. Uh, in December of 67, I got my orders to, for Vietnam. This village was a battlefield in the Republic of Vietnam. Until recently, its people lived under the domination of communist guerrillas. Vietnamese forces, assisted by United States Marines, drove out the guerrillas with force of arms. After 30 days were up, it was time to fly, so we flew from here to Chicago, or I did, and then into uh, San, San Francisco, which was at Oakland. So I was based there for two or three days, and then we got on a, uh, if anybody remembers the old Flying Tiger Airlines, it's what carried us to Vietnam. So we left here, flew to Hawaii, then Wake Island, and then in uh, Saigon. Had a choice, either go with the 101st Airborne or 4th Infantry Division. And I said I'd rather go with the uh, 4th Infantry Division. Uh, so that's where I left there on a uh, convoy of trucks going from where I was heading for play coup. We spent one night with the, uh, at Anke Pass with the Rock Marines, which were the South Korean Marines that were there. And they were, when you were in their base, you felt safe. They were just mean. So we spent one or two nights there and then we went on into play coup, which was the home of the 4th Infantry Division, uh, which I was attached to. And I stayed there for uh, six months doing that. And from Pleiku, had an opportunity to go up to Doc To uh, for six months, which I took. And all these, all this moving around in the uh, Central Highlands is what it was, was done helicopter, which was the uh, Hueys mostly, the little. Uh, Passenger ones carried six people, and some of it in the Chinooks, which carried 24. I really liked the Hueys. They just, they felt safe anyway. So I went up to Doc Toe and, uh, for six months. Actually, myself, I was never in a firefight. Uh, it was almost nightly or very often you got rocketed, mortar attacks, this type thing. So you did, just did the best you could. Uh, 
your compound, your, if you were lucky enough to have a tent, it was holy because of the mortar attack shrapnel all through your tents and, and everything. And it, it's hard to conceive this day and time that if you were lucky enough to be at base, you might get a bath. But that bath was, it was warm if the sun shined because it was gravity flow, shower. I mean, it was cold water in a 100-gallon drum up in the air. So, you know, you didn't have what you consider the, you would consider necessities of home. It, and all of it come to comes down to that you, you appreciate what you have after you've been through that for a year. It was an experience that, as I guess anyone would be, you're scared to death going into, but at my age, you're glad you've had that experience. Well, in experiences that uh, I had, over there is, I can't say any real thing that sticks out is the appreciation of what you have, that you're away from home, you're away from your wife, you're away from your family uh, for a year. And you know you're gonna be a year, so you just do the best you can and do what you're sent to do and do it to the best of your ability and you learn that you have to uh, depend on other people too because that guy beside you may be the one saving your life. We had been, my wife and I, Pat, had been married uh, one year or two years before I got drafted. Actually, we were 28. To 30 somewhere in that neighborhood before we had two had uh, two children we had uh, a boy and a girl and uh, raised them and they moved on and we moved on and what I've done with my life since I you say I retired uh, since I've got to be an old man and uh, really actually do very little. Now, I, when I first retired, I really enjoyed uh, the river, fishing, doing all those things that you didn't have time to. And I've been fortunate enough to, to the good Lord's provided that I'm able to have a fairly good life with uh, being able to spend summers on the river and uh, just enjoy things as it goes by and just do what you want to. Just be with friends and family and that's what that's what it's all about.